Hi, Searching Solitude here on a beautiful Sunday in the Colorado Rockies. Today we're tying the Quigley Cripple. Um, I'm going to tie it in olive, depending on what part of the world you're in. Uh, you may see these in um, Adam's Gray. You might see them in, um, in brown. Um, you may see them in PMDs. Uh, what a cripple is, is it refers to the mayfly nymph that is stuck in the shell and hasn't been able to escape. And so as it floats along the river, trout perceive this as an easier meal than uh, perhaps uh, an a adult mayfly that could fly away any minute. And so I, one of my favorite patterns, I tie a lot of them, I fish a lot of them. Uh, you can tie these anywhere from size 14, depending on the mayflies in your part of the world, but size 14 all the way down to size 22, I suppose. Uh, today I've got a size 18, um, let me get some light on here, I've got a size 18 barbless hook in the vise, and um, let's see what we come up with. Here's a uh, look at the finished pattern. This one happens to be in gray. I'm going to switch colors. I'm going to go to olive just to show that you can tie these in anything, uh, in any color. The um, materials today we're using begins with olive, ADOT threads. Pretty much all I tie anymore is ADOT uh, thread. Um, we're going to use golden brown Antron, which kind of feels... Um, like a nylon, long fiber nylon comes in a hank. The, the trick here, I guess, that what you need a little bit of practice is knowing just how much to pull off for the size fly you're looking to tie. We're also going to be tying with some Comparadun uh, deer hair in natural color. Comparadun, they, I, it's classified as Comparadun hair because the, the hair on this particular deer is very straight, very fine, and uh, ties real, real small flies for you. Stacks real nicely as well. Uh, and lastly, we're going to be using some uh, super fine waterproof dubbing in uh, the color of your choice or the color to match the natural. I'm going to be using olive green uh, here today. Uh, and lastly, um, I've got a brown rooster hackle that I haven't prepared yet. I'm going to do that on camera so you can kind of see if you haven't tied before with hackle like that, um, just how that works. So let me get my glasses on and let's tie on. I begin with my olive thread at the thorax. I, for, for some patterns, I do not start right behind the eye. And the reason for this is that it will help you with your proportioning and making sure you don't crowd the eye later on as you, well, not, it's these black stainless hooks that I'm using. Um, man, slippery, slippery, slippery. And so, I don't know, 10 wraps on there and it's still just unraveled right off. Okay, so I work my thread back towards the bend of the hook. And when I get to the bend, I'm going to let it hang. See if I can come in a little bit tighter for you. There you go. First thing going on there is my tailing material. So I've narrowed down that big hank I showed you to just a small wisp of, I don't know, 10 or 12 fibers. And I'm going to use a pinch wrap, pinch between my fingers, pull the thread straight down, a pinch wrap to bind that to the top of the hook. Now instead of snipping off the excess, I'm going to grasp it and continue tying it down to add some bulk to the body of this fly. I do that rather than build up the head just using thread. I will use thread. But if I have that antron in there, it adds a little bit of bulk to the fly so I can come back now, work my way back towards the initial tie-in point and begin building a thread body. Uh, I don't like to dub the body of my mayflies. Uh, one, it tends to make your mayflies real fuzzy and if you've ever caught a mayfly, you know they don't have fuzzy bodies. Number two, all that dubbing is just like a sponge to absorb water, even if it's waterproof dubbing. So I prefer to um, use a thread body, at least on the smaller flies, use a thread body to um, create the body of my mayfly. All right. So all I'm doing is going back and forth here, just kind of building up a, a taper, a carrot shaped taper. Mayflies, remember, are real thin at the back here and they tend to thicken up as you get closer and closer to 
uh, the thorax. And so when I feel like I've got that pretty much where I'd like it, I'm going to let the thread hang and I'm going to go to my olive dubbing. And this is going to take a little pinch. With dubbing, less is better. It is better to make more wraps with very, very little dubbing on your thread than to make less wraps with a big, huge hunk of yarn on your thread. And so, now the difference with this particular pattern is I'm going to keep most of this dubbing in one, one central location here on this dry fly. And remember, this is not a fully formed adult. It's a, an adult that's gotten stuck uh, on its way to adulthood. Uh, let's just make sure we get this where we want it. There we go. Come back and do that right there we go. Okay. Now that I've got the dubbing where and how I want it, I've already clipped a small, small pinch of uh, Comparadon deer hair and put it in my uh, stacker, my Dr. Slick stacker, to get the tips all aligned. I lay it sideways, pull the cap off, and now I can grasp the hairs. Transfer to my other hand, and I'm looking now to see if there are any broken hairs. I don't want the broken tips in there. Now's my chance to pull those out without um, compromising the fly. Alright, so if I'm comfortable with what I've got, now I can hold that hair up on the body of the fly, measure it for length. I'm looking for one uh, body, one uh, hook shank length, and I'm leaning it over the eye of the fly, pinching and cinching that down real tight. Two reasons. One, I want the hair to flare. Two, I've already discovered that this, this style hook, it's a new hook I'm trying out, this style hook is very slippery and your materials tend to spin on the hook. Okay, so before I go any further, I'm going to grab the clump of deer hair, pull it straight up, and I'm going to come down at an angle and clip that deer hair real close to the thorax. Now I can throw away the butt ends, come back and make sure I build a little bit of a dam in front of the deer hair. There we go. Push it back, make sure that deer hair is not going anywhere. And I can come back into this collar, this gap I've created between the wing leaning over the eye and the thorax. And I'm making that collar because in that collar is where my hackle is going to live. So I've got here, I plucked this off of a, a silver grade Whiting's Rooster hackle. Back up just a bit so you can see what's going on. And I'm going to show you how to prepare this. I'll just pluck this right off the cape. and. It's not ready to tie on yet. Um, this whole bottom section here is all fuzzy. You don't use that when you tie. That just absorbs water. Not only that, these fibules, these fibers here in the back are not stiff enough to keep your fly supported. On the other hand, there's no reason just to tie with what's up here in the front. So we look along the stem until you see an arrow, a shaded arrow, and that tells you where to clip off and for this fly, I'm not sure if I can catch this on camera for you, for this fly it's about right here. Everything on this side has no use and everything above that will be what we use for this for uh, future flies. So the first thing I'm going to do is snip off at the point of that arrow I talked about. Now I've got these fibers I need to pluck away, strip away, to give me a bare stem that I can tie on. I want a bare stem to tie. I tie with the shiny side facing, uh, facing me, which ultimately will have the shiny side facing forward when I wrap it. And I, using my thread, tie down that stem in that colliery space we built. There we go, earlier. All right, so now I'll bring my thread forward got that collar built. Now with a cripple it does not take a lot of wraps. We're not hackling a Catskill dry here. So maybe two, three wraps is all it will take to give us the effect we're looking for here. Cinch that off or tie that down. Don't worry about the, the deer hair flaring. We'll deal with that later. 
not a problem. Just keep all the deer hair, the tips, facing over the front of the fly. Now I can come in and clip that rooster hackle right close to the fly itself. I can take my thread, stroke back all the fibers, take my thread over the front, build myself a little bit of a, a head behind the eye, grab my whip finisher, and just get two or three wraps on there if you can. Three would be ideal. Come on. There we go. And slice away your thread. Now I'm not quite there yet. I want to stroke these deer hairs back over towards the over the front of the fly. That's where they'll ride naturally, not straight up, but over the front of the fly. And then I'm going to come back and look at this tail a little bit and clip away for proper length. I don't want to clip away all the, ta the uh, tailing fibers all together because I don't want a clean cut. I want to have it staggered, jagged, some fibers long, some fibers short. All right, when you're comfortable, when you're satisfied with the way it looks, uh, you just check for any loose hairs as you do with pretty much all your flies. But there you have the Quigley Cripple in Olive. Hope you like it.